Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back. How are y'all doing? Alrighty. Well. All right, so last we left off, um, you guys were going to go to the library to go and research some stuff. Um, you found something in the contract, but you could not identify what it was. Uh, Mason officially joins the party, and uh, Marcus went on his merry way for a moment. Just got up from the long desk. I forgot right. to put on my headphones, so everything's being duplicated. Give me one <laughs> second. Yeah, because my microphone is right next to the speaker for my computer. So everything's duplicated. Can you speak now for just a moment? We had a long rest, right? Yes, you guys also had a long rest because you went uh, to bed. So that is also a thing. So if you did not do the long rest, go ahead and do it. Waking up, uh, we're not, you had your own room, right? Uh, yeah, I you... had a different, uh, inn I want to. Yeah, um, would you have gone cheap or would you have gone, uh, a uh, more nominal price. Um, because of his uh, detective-like nature, he always gets, goes for like the cheaper ends. Not out of money's sake, just to not stand out. Okay, so you're in the slums at the moment. You're at the inn in the slums. Whereas, I assume Fenrir, you would have just gone upstairs because you guys had... The last thing was you being at dinner in the beautiful yeah. coin with Mason, or Marcus. There's basically no reason not to. With Marcus? So there's Listen, no reason not to just are. go straight up there and in bed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Mason, are you a particularly early riser? Oh, yeah. Uh, some, some people would consider him an elf with how, like, yeah, he just, he gets the bare minimum. When it comes to the sleep. Okay. So. I'm sure Mason. Ends, ends up knocking on Fenrir's door. Where he. Gives a yawn. And wakes up. And then opens the door. Wrapping a. Black. Fabric into a. Kind of hooded thing. And then kind of yawns again. He's like. All right. You wanted to read? Yeah. Uh, also, you know, it's probably would notice that his uh, owl familiar is back to being an albino weasel uh, chilling on his shoulder. Yeah. Uh, since we can't really do anything else, and since I really don't know uh, uh, Marcus too much, I want to make sure we didn't fuck ourselves too hard uh, signing that p slip of paper. Agreed. All right. Be a good enough plan until we return to the potential vampires later tonight. Yeah, it's not really the biggest spider I can hold myself up, but I really hope we won't have to do battle with some fanged critters. <laughs> to be honest, I look forward to it. On the way over, unless you want to do anything before leaving. Oh no, he he's just gonna go with the flow with whatever you got. He's gonna just pose a simple question. The so your beast is it like a druid a druid's pet? Intelligent? Uh, he's just scratching on like. Oh, Are you guys? On the bed, just want to quickly interrupt here. 
Uh, we were, I guess, at, at this point, I was imagining walk, like leaving the building and walking towards the library. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, um, where would you said it turned back into a ferret weasel? Yeah. Uh, before he went and took his long rest, he changed uh, his familiar from an owl to back to being an albino weasel. Okay. Catface would be following behind you two and would be probably next to the weasel walking in between unless the weasel's on you. Uh, it's on his shoulder, but okay. seeing like the cat, it would probably just like walk besides it out of curiosity. Yeah, Catface is kind of more looking at it like, what the hell are you? Kind of thing. Staring back. As it like... <laughs> That's just going throughout the street. I the kettle black. Uh, nah. Uh, so, when it comes to Lady Aerodeath, she's, uh, like I said, she's a shaman, so she taught me some tricks. Uh, this is a bit of a familiar, so, yeah, similar to some druids that can have it, but more similar to what, uh, mystical folk like wizards can have. Interesting. Honestly, I'm very inexperienced with wizards. I don't have very many where I come from. Yeah, where I'm from, yeah, they're a dime a dozen too. They mostly want to keep to themselves more than anything else. But Lady Air Death, she she never cared what other people thought of her. <laughs> oh, see, it seems like I can see their work everywhere in this nation. I'm sure we'll arrive at the library and walk into a building that's bigger on the inside. Yeah, you've been in the library before. But yeah, that, that'll just uh, accentuate his point. Yeah, you've all been in the you've actually you've all been in the library before. As you enter, it's much bigger on the inside. The receptionist kind of perks up when you guys go in, and she. Kind of winces a little more at Mark at Mason, and goes, "Are you Mason?" That I am. I have a letter for you. And she pulls out an envelope and she hand and she like puts it over the desk, kind of like, "Here you go." He taps. He tips his hat to her. Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. As he pulls the letter towards him, knowing 99%, like, this is probably who he thinks it is. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Fenrir's gonna look over the pad curios curiously and be like, They give the letters to the library? Oh, they can. Uh, sometimes you can be specific. Lady Aerodeth kind of... Uh, I, I swear she has, like, her own eyes floating over me sometimes knowing where I'm at, so she can guess where I'll probably be next when I get my mail. Huh. And uh, he's gonna just take, like, a small little dagger and just open it up, the letter up. All right. Let me just quickly finish what the letter says. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> the weasel still staring at the cat like, what the heck are you? <laughs> cat lady, the cat weasel face is kind of like, kind of like, pats its head, like, not, like, with, like, claws out, just, like, a paw, just, like, softly, like, pats its head and is, like, what the hell are you? It's a boop. And it does Cat a face intentionally boops it. <laughs> <laughs> it, ble it bleps its tongue out some more. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, as you pull out the letter, it is pretty, br it's very brief. It says, and I quote, Thank you for letting me know. 
I will investigate it. I will be investigating with allies. Zero death. P.S. The cat lady can be trusted. And that is it. Yeah, Mason's reading this all out loud. Yeah, he just, as he finishes, like, the cat lady can be trusted. It looks at Fenrir. Uh, we know I, her. Yeah, our, our group met, met her. I don't know if I would trust her, but I, I know who she's talking about. Well, she can be trusted. Uh, Catface says, just looking up at you. Well, if my patron says she's alright, I trust her. As you should. <laughs> uh, perhaps we'll run, run into her again. She she was the one who gave us the information on the whereabouts of this servant. Yeah. Um, we'll see her again, more than likely. I bet one of my nine lives on that one. I thought that was a myth. Um, yes and no. You are talking, so I wouldn't be too surprised if you had a baker's dozen of lives. <laughs> Note to self, the cat has extra lives he can give. I can't give them. At least I don't think I can. <laughs> Mason just kind of pockets the letter. Uh, Cat Catface kind of stand sits on his um, on his back legs, kind of like a kind of like how cats do, and he puts out a paw and takes out his claws, and he's like, "Do you want to test it out?" Um, uh, the, the weasel just kind of like gets in like <laughs> like a T like aggressive pose, like don't even try it. <laughs> Oh, I'm just kidding. All right, where did you need to go anyways? Uh, we were going to do research on what possible magic that uh, contract or paperwork that he saw was. Oh, um, well, yes. That'll be in section 485 up the stairs to the fourth floor. As for your question earlier, uh, the library actually handles all the mail in the city. Oh. We have several, um, children at the cusp of, uh, readiness to work that hand out the mail every morning. You said on contracts, though. Uh, well, we were just helping a, a fellow detective, and I noticed something pretty weird. We found some extra evidence. Uh, hmm. Just usual log, you know, just writing it down paperwork, red tape and all that. But something caught my eye, like on the paperwork. Something magical. Well, if it was a contract or some other type of paperwork... It could be that it was a it was a charm so that the pages wouldn't be destroyed. A lot of the town's guards have such paperwork so that they don't so that if let's say someone tried to burn down the record building or try to torch incriminating evidence, they wouldn't be able to. Finero just looked curiously at Mason's, like, would such simple protection uh, confuse you so much? Mm, it's back in my town, we had that too. The problem was, I've been burned in the past before. Thinking you're signing something doing, like, one thing, but it turns out they're using it to backstab you, t twisting your words for another. That is true. In which case, for contracts and other type of thing, you're actually going to go a bit further to 491. 
in that section there is book on all manner of different seals that you can put upon contracts that can bind the signature, the people who sign to all sorts of things, as well as the protections that the contract is given by those signs. Uh, Mason kind of nods, is like, thank you kindly. We'll probably be here for a bit, since I bet there's a few books that will keep Take us your time. Uh, busy. Take your time. I've got a little nothing really to do. The library is always open. And it's one of my favorite places to be. I eat. Uh, Mason turns to Fenrir. All right, uh, I'll be doing research on that. If you want to help, go right ahead. Uh, but if not, um, you'll know where I'll be at least. I suppose I'll follow you around. I would honestly prefer scouting on my own, but I doubt either of you want me doing that. I mean, that might be a good idea. Here. Yeah. Uh, so we're probably just going to go to that uh, 491 section. Alrighty. Uh, the stairs are over there. And she points to a spiral staircase that continuously goes up. As you ascend... Oh, gonna follow you. Yeah. As you ascend, you see all manner of different things. Just books, mostly. But you see a couple people studying, a couple people taking out some books, looking at them, going, nah, that's not it. Putting it back, taking out another book, nah, that's not it. As you go up to the fourth floor and then over, the fourth floor is pretty empty as it is. Um, the way that this library is set up is that um, it's sort of in an O shape where you have the rows of books and all of that around. And in the center is sort of like a guardrail and then like nothingness. Like chandeliers are down from the ceiling that light up pretty much the whole floor. Um, but other than that, it's completely empty in the middle. There are like chairs and seats and tables that you are able to sit down and actually study at that have independent light sources. That way you don't have to worry about someone blocking out the light source. There's one on the table. As you get to the section, uh, there are all manner of different books. Um, books on warding, books on protection, books on uh, curses, books on... Um, manipulation, forcing someone to do something, um, all manners of different topics. Um, Mason, I'm gonna have you do a history check for me. Alright. To try to see if you can remember what the seal looked like. That will be a 12. Alright, so you have a good idea. You don't exactly remember every specific detail, but you have the basic gist of what it could be. If you were to flip through the books and stuff. Uh, Mason's probably gonna take, like, uh, like, either a charcoal pencil or, like, you know, uh, an ink pen and just draw on, like, a blank sheet of paper that he's got. And showed uh -huh. the Fenrir uh, what the rune looked like to him. Uh, I'm not the greatest artist ever, but this is the as close as I can remember what it looked like. If you can try to look for something like this, I can do that. All right, I'm gonna have you both roll investigation. I'm gonna have my maneuver to that. Hmm. Oh, 
that's a 15. Uh, I got an 18. All right. So you both find two books on completely different topics, but they both look very, very similar to what you were able to remember and draw down onto the piece of paper. One is a sigil of protection for contracts. The second is for control. As you look further into that book, uh, you see that it is, um, that the sign is meant to control the person signing to do a specific thing. But these are the two that are the most similar to each other. There are minor differences between the two of them, but those minor differences are not present on your drawing. And you cannot remember exactly which one it is. Well, seems like one of either two extremes. Either it was covering his own ass, or we may have just fucked ourselves over. <sighs> this magic is so frustrating. Yeah, that can be. But, I mean... I don't think it'd be anything too malicious. My thing is, why put it in there at all? If it is the ladder of taking control. Was the former obviously small? So what do you mean? I don't think... Like... Is it, poss is it possible that the control could either be st straight up full on, they take control of your body, or just a simp, or something like a suggestion? You can't do an extremely specific action. Uh, no, it is to do a extremely specific action. Uh, the control one, as you look more into it you can see that it is uh, twofold. It is either immediate or it has a trigger. Well, by the looks of it, if it is this one, not saying it is, but that small possibility, if it is, it must be based off some type of trigger he has in mind. Or that someone else has in mind. He is using base papers, and I don't trust any guard system. Mm hmm Well, does oh. the book say how to reverse either of them? Uh -huh. Uh... Mason's gonna keep looking. Uh, I'm pretty sure and most of it's kind of goes in like the properties and how to use it more than reversing, if I had to guess. Yes, it does. Um, it does, however, note that uh, the control one can't, if it is a trigger, can be, um, can be nullified. But it does not say how. Uh, gotta love, gotta love going from one book to another. Uh. Isn't that the joy of a library? Oh yeah. Or so a certain librarian has said. Oh, trust me, well, I do I enjoy you. it. It's more like the case of we, our butts are in the fire right now, so more time looking around, the hotter ours are gonna be. It's true. We also don't know when it will trigger. 
or if it will even trigger at all, and it could be the other one just for protection. Exactly. But we should, we well, should probably oh, yeah. plan for the worst. Exactly. Well, I doubt the vampire is the one controlling these things under any circumstances. I mean, if vampires... It, if it is control, mm -hmm. I would... If it is the control, I would suspect either um, the officer himself or the leader at the top that he works for, the mayor candidate, candidate has, in, has to say at the end of the day. Now that's what I was thinking too. But why would she want that? What purpose would that hold for her? We know nothing about her. For all uh, for all we know, she has her own plots and masterminds, and it involves brainwashing the entire police guard. That's I true. Uh, honestly, I don't care. <laughs> but I not. was going around this morning, and most people were talking more in favor of the vampire than her, due to the fact of the murder within her watch. Wouldn't that be a reason to do something about it? Yeah, but with the election happening today, like at midday, you would think that she'd already enact this plan of mind control so that she or, wins the seat. Or she'd do it today, or possibly just after today. You don't often do coups until you're actually being asked to. I don't know. Uh, I mean, she's not mayor right now. Yeah. Uh, plus, think of it like this. In case of people that find new types of evidence that connects to this, the more people she knows that she can manipulate that have keen eyes and possible abilities to them, like us, the more that she may have underneath her thumb in case she wants to coup de gras and just... The whole That's the other thing. Habits. I'm sorry, what's the officer's name? I keep forgetting. Uh, her name was... Oh, the... Our buddy. Sir... Oh, your buddy was Marcus. 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 Marcus was, uh, uh, the guy who you or guys were with. The other... I do worry. Werewolf. While it's likely that... It is likely enough that the that the signs or Marcus is doing that we should not warn him of it per se. You know, not better not to warn someone you're in on their plots. But also, if it's something like the silver dagger, that could be why it was his papers. I'm testing things, but I. It could be any of us, or not. It, like, I don't want to. I, I would not like to t to take an action that makes us lose in any scenario, but then that kind of paralyzes us. That is true. We don't know what's happening. I would like to. Watch these people, perhaps. I still wish to but find out some more information. If we find out who our true villain is, we could fight them right there. Although I'm sure that is not your favorite force of action. Although if they see us, they could enact whatever. Control if it is control. It would be beneficial to find the way to nullify it. And I think that would be best suit for my capabilities. All right. And How who... do you plan to remove it? Well, I don't know yet. We haven't found the book to f nullify it. Yep. I'm going to go to the head librarian and ask uh, if she can give us a quick reference. I'm pretty sure it's around here in this section, but with how big this library is, uh, I don't mind 
pacing yeah. back and forth. It's near infinite. This one. just shrugs. As you go down to the library and she goes, Oh, did you find the book you were looking for? Oh, uh, yes, I did. And we did find some information, but uh, it's kind of pointing us in another direction. Uh, oh. We may have found the, the sigil itself, but it doesn't tell us how to possibly counter against it. Mm, one of those sigils. Yeah, um, down in the nullification section, which is over in section 210. Thank you, Kyle. As Mason's gonna head out towards that, uh, with the, with the same, uh, control book in hand to use as, like, a cross-reference. Cross As you go over to 210, you go through and she go, and as you go across the section itself, um, you do find a book titled, um, Evil Contracts and How to Nullify Their Effects. Isn't just gonna look at Fenrir like, Evil Contracts. And just pull it out and start reading it. Sounds like all contracts to me. You're not wrong. A lot of them do screw you over, Dan. So, as you read through, you find out there are two ways of doing so. One of which is to destroy the contract. This may hurt, that might bite us in the butt, especially if it's not that. The second Close one up. is mm -hmm. a ritual that can only be done on a full moon. Mm. Or, sorry, there is no moon. Um, it can only be done during one of the changes of season. You should come up with a, like, obvious thing for full moon. Uh, I should. I really should. Maybe I will. Maybe it will come. <laughs> Hint it. Um, for reference, nice. the next change of season is in three weeks. Bad. God damn it. Good. So the only way we can prove that it was the... Prove what type of contract we signed was literally to go over there and try to destroy one or both of them. Couldn't you look at it again? With this new knowledge of... of what they look like? Problem being, I could, but that'd kind of blow our cover, and there's no guarantee that Marcus is going to let us do that. Uh, I would be happy to have to sneak in and do it anyways, but honestly, I don't. I wouldn't even know what we're looking for. I would, or at least have a generalized idea. Not every station's going to be the same. But I could possibly sneak in and double check. Why not just go unseen? Check. Mostly because there was a murder that happened yesterday. But with the election going on today, most of the forces would probably be over there. I doubt they're, they're worried about people breaking into prison. Um, not really more prison, more of a, the police paper oh, yeah, office. I, I doubt, I doubt they're worried about people breaking into the, uh, guard's office. 
they might be worried about breaking into prison, considering the last. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the only thing we can do. Unless you guys got any other suggestions till we till this election pans out. Not really. All right. It looks like I'm going invisible for this one. <laughs> Where would you like me stationed? I could, I could give you backup, but only I would need some kind of signal from from whatever distance you're at. Uh, as he kind of just gives uh, his familiar to him, like this little guy's connected to me. If uh, if anything goes wrong in there, he'll basically give you like a signal. Basically, he's just gonna like scratch or like you know squeak a certain way and just tell him like you know cause a distraction so I can get out. All right. Any preference on said distraction? I can be essential. All right. Uh, so gonna put up all the books. Thank the librarian again for their time. And head to the police station to do some investigation on those paperworks. And you do so. Uh, the front gate, however, normally open, is closed. The only way in and out, as officers are going in and out, are through the relations office. Would you like me to open doors? Oh, uh, I'm double checking my stuff. Yeah, no lock picking sets. Yet. <laughs> I uh, these front doors are like huge, like oh no, I'm uh, more like, like giant archway door type door. front doors. Oh no, I'm more referring to when I get inside. Oh, okay. Because still invisibility plan. Uh. Just deciding whether the front, either the front or the side is the best option. Um, I he could always them. disguise himself again as a, a lawyer. You would you represent? That too, that too. Uh, ooh, deception is not that high though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, I'm just gonna try to go through relations and try to work through there, if possible. And if not, I could walk in visibly and open the doors if I had a question to ask. Wouldn't you need to be one that's reasonable? Or question? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, that could actually work. Uh, yeah, actually, having you invisible beside me could actually be really good. That would work as well, although I wouldn't be able to do the same action. I would be nearby if you ever need it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, take care of some guards. Yeah. Oh, non-lethally, just knock them out if you can. <laughs> of course. Alright, alright. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm just basically gonna try to... I'm gonna first turn him invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm just I think you gotta do it at the same time. Actually, I don't know if I can do it at the same time. I need to double check the spell. You can uh, cast know. it to cast it on two people, but it's concentration, so you cannot cast it twice. Hmm. Oh yeah, I just couldn't remember the upcast. Yeah, so I can do it. So I can turn both of us invisible with a third spell slot. So that'll work. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're gonna go invisible and I guess uh, go through the... Uh, the archway? The archway is closed. I'm saying, couldn't we, like, try to climb or jump over it? Uh, no. It is, uh, if you think of, like, castle gate kind of thing, like, iron bars, 
like gotcha. floor to ceiling. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, both invisible and try to go through the relations. As you go through the relations, there everything's kind of at a buzz. Um, guards are going back and forth between doing stuff. Um, um, all how very. Do I feel like I'm, I'm sorry. Repeat that. Um, we're both invisible, meaning I can't see him. Mm -hmm. How do we work that out? Uh, basically, my character, well, we're just going to say, like, uh, just keep a five-foot distance from each other. Plus, you'll still have I my familiar. I can't see you. Well, no, I get that, but my familiar knows where I'm at. So he can, like, you know, tell you if you're getting too close or too far. The familiar doesn't get to turn invisible. I assumed you were leaving it behind. What is the plan? Doop a doop a do. Well, it's just, uh, God. So, it's more like the case of, I think we're just gonna have to s just say, like, you know, we just gotta keep, like, a five foot distance between each other and. Uh, that doesn't like help. We're gonna need the fucking. We're gonna need to hold hands. <laughs> or that, too. Right, hold like, hands. I can't. Like, you being within five feet doesn't let me see where you're going. And doesn't let me know if you're in five, if you're within five feet or not. Oh no, I get that. I get that. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, five. We're just gonna have to hold hands. <laughs> or, or, or whatever. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> yeah. So we get to sneak through doors and through places while holding hands. Yeah. Great. Yep. Um, as you guys are going through. Several things going on. Um, everything's in a ruckus. As you enter into the courtyard, the courtyard's a little more quiet. Um, there are still guards coming to and from. But for the most part, it's much more quiet and a lot less people. You could uh, freely like whisper out here compared to like inside where you wouldn't be able to talk at all. Because someone would overhear you. All right, we shouldn't be too far from where usual evidence lockers or like paperwork would be set at. All right, the uh, door seems unlocked. Or... A quick question: Anything smell off to you? Uh, anything? Yeah, does anything smell off? Um, roll me perception. Ten. Um, you do not smell Marcus at all. I'll mention it, but that doesn't seem that surprising. We're like, not even Marcus. around the entrances. I suppose we kind of expected him to be doing paperwork. Uh, Mason's as, just kind of into himself with this one. Yeah, as you get to the building with the records and you go inside, you also do not smell him. Certainly he was here. Oh. Yeah, Mason's gonna be like, wait, wait. If he hasn't been here at all and hasn't actually turned in this stuff. Like, why would he keep the paperwork to himself? Let's go back and figure out, and figure out where he went. Unless, unless you wanted to search through this anyways, see if the paper somehow ended up here without his scent. Uh people going around too quick, we're just gonna have to go with our gut and just uh, follow your nose. We gotta find where Marcus is. Is that reasonable, DM? Yes. Okay. Of course it is. The 
Uh, my question right. is going to be then, are you going to leave the precinct and go back to the beautiful coin to pick up his scent? Or are you going to stay here, rifle through some documents, see if it's possibly here, and then go? Fenrir um, mentions checking anyways, but he'll leave that up too. Uh, Mason will look just in case. Plus, it kind of, if there isn't, it, basically if he notices nobody's been here like a whole day, then that gives more evidence that he never mm -hmm. even came here. Um, as you go in and you look around, it is evident that people have been in this building within the past six hours. And people have gone through files and whatnot and stuff like that. Okay. There are still some people in here looking for files. So we get to be a couple of ghosts open in cabinets. Mm -hmm. As you yeah, go through, yeah. I'm going to have you both do an investigation check. Got uh, you. Yeah. Well, uh... Now I'll just take the three, or the two. 27. 27. Made up for Fenrir just going, ooh, drawer. I think he was more <laughs> distraction for Mason to look around. I am very worried about people and would and am ready to attack any of them if they come by. Whilst holding Mason's hand. Probably yeah. not here, since he's, like, doing things. Probably more and like holding onto his shoulder. Yeah. The biggest thing was, I didn't know where to go. Yeah. So I couldn't, um, like, just walk down the same hallways as him and expect that to work out. So, yeah. Um, as you're rifling through stuff, you see a lot of, um, you see a lot of different documents with Nason's name on it and stuff like that. You do not see the contract. And it does not look like Mason has filed it yet. Yeah, we need to go find. We need to go find Marcus and ask him some questions because paperwork ain't here. I'm thinking his scent will lead to whoever else is not to be trusted. Are you ready to return? Yes. Alright. So you guys go through and you exit out. And you get to the beautiful coin. By that time, the, um, the invisibility wears off. Or it's a concentration. Oh, but doesn't it last up to an hour? Yeah, yeah an hour. Soon. Yeah. So it wears off at by that point, by the time you get to the beautiful coin and out of there. All right. Fenrir, go ahead and make me a perception check with your nose. Being all smelly, smelly. 22. Jesus, you catch on to a scent almost immediately. All right, let's follow it. All right. It... And it takes you throughout the town, down different alleyways, over to different avenues, and you get right over to over here at this house. I don't know if it's updated yet. For everyone. Else. There it goes. Right over here. And it kind of takes the zigzaggy route to go here. Um, instead of just going directly here. As you are at the doorway, you do you smell a track 
going in, but it kind of stops here. You don't smell it, at least not from this, like, line of scent. You don't smell it going in any other direction. It seems like he went inside, but I would prefer not barging in through the front door. Yeah, there is a possibility he know he may know he may know that we're on his track. Uh so Mason's probably going to just turn uh, turn his familiar into a spider. Is there mm -hmm. any, like, cracks or windows that the spider could go through? Um, there is an upstairs window that is open. However, you do not know if the upstairs window is a part of his, um, house, since inside of the town and stuff, there are several, um, residences that have just a stairway leading up to a second floor, like, apartment type thing. And the first floor has a completely different entrance. Uh, probably just he could go risky. under the door. Yeah, it's gonna be a small spider, so yeah. See if you can crawl under there. Yeah, so he crawls under the door, and looking around, it looks like any other house Do you go anywhere in particular? Uh I was actually double checking. Uh, so do I would like to do a perception. Do I use the my perception or like the spiders? Use yours and if, they're, and if the spider is proficient. Mhm. Uh -huh. wait. Okay. Never mind. This is a this is a familiar. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Familiar. So, yeah. would it be the familiar? I forget the ruling on that one. It's it's yeah. it's the spiders. It's the spiders. I, I, I was perception. thinking of like wild shape. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking of like okay. it's, no. it's good to clarify. All right. Uh, yeah. A uh, passive of twelve perception, so it should be just a straight uh straight D twenty roll. Uh, he's a twelve. <laughs> yeah, what's his wisdom? Yeah, it's wisdom. It's wisdom is ten. It's passive yeah. is twelve. Okay. Uh, that means okay. it's prof that means it's proficient. Is it? Does it get a plus two perception? No, it doesn't say anything on perception. That's interesting. Because twelve is not the passive you get from a ten wisdom. Probably not. Either way, I uh, got a 17. If we want to say, for rule's sake, let's just say 19 with, uh, pers uh, you know, uh, proficiency. Oh, no, uh, technically 20 with proficiency, because plus 3? Yeah, plus 3, so 20. Okay. Um, we'll say dirty 20. I'm good with that. Okay. Because we don't 100% know the ruling, and we'll look at it later. And we'll all be all the wiser for looking it up later. Um, as you are looking around, nothing seems to be out of place. Everything looks to be in shape. Um, there's a little bit of food on the table, probably from last night dinner. Um, like some bread and like a block of cheese was left out. Nothing like, nothing like, um... That would be something that you would definitely put away. Um, as you go through, um, you see that the bed is empty as you make your way into um, sort of the the area where the bed is. Um, and you do not see any signs of any being being inside. Yeah, I'm relaying all of this to, uh, Fenrir. Alright. I'm gonna break in. Make me a strength check, please. Thanks. Oh, 
Unless you're going to do it in a more, less chaotic way. <laughs> you bash on the door, and nothing happens. Your shoulder hurts. Yeah, so, yeah my spider definitely hears it. Uh, I kind of, like, unattuned, like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what? I don't know if that's the best idea. There's no one in. I mean, the scent goes here. Yeah, but you could possibly still hear. Uh, I'm gonna... I, I guess I'm gonna just try to improvise lockpicking with a dagger. Okay. Uh, go ahead, roll a straight d20 then. Alright. That is a 5. You do not succeed. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, but it draws less attention. Uh, fine. Try again. Uh, and I will switch back to the spider. Does he hear or notice anything going around him? Nope. As you look nope. around with the spider, nothing seems to be happening. Right. Fenrir, right down, you other oh, guess. Oh, gosh. Eleven again. Boom. Nothing. Um, as you are in the spider, I assume you make your way towards the front door to see, like, why the hell is he having so much difficulty doing this? Um, as yes. you look, he ha there is a metal bar that is slotted into a kind of, uh, latch across um attached to the door that it slides into that is fully inserted and that seems to be this stopping the door this guy's got a pretty big lock aka iron bar on the door it's not big it's like it's like hand well i'm saying big I'm saying big in the case of spider size and person. Spider size, yes. But in terms of, like, actual normal person, you can, like, put your hand over it and just slide it over. Yeah. Uh, well, I respect yeah, his need yeah. for privacy and, say, and think we need to... We're in a bit of a hurry right now. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to... Think. Oh, there we go. 21. You break it. Um, Mason, can I have your spider make a dexterity check really quickly? Don't tell me spider. I have like Uh, let's see. You said just a check, right? Yeah. Dexterity, or save. We'll do a save. Alright. Uh, actually, when I'm looking at the stats, I don't think it really does have any saves on here that I'm seeing. Yeah, just do a dexterity so, check then. Yeah, that's just a plus two. Twenty-one. Your spider just, like, inches over at, like, the last second, like, without you even thinking to do it, as the little, like, latch that was attached to the wall holding the latch that was, like, locking the door bolts out as he breaks the door open and tumbles and almost hits you. If a spider could be shaking in fear, it would be. <laughs> they could do that. Um, the, I would know. Uh, the Fenrir, Fenrir is going to go in and be kind of happy with himself. Be like, all right, let's see where the scent goes. As you follow the scent, it goes yeah. through the uh, bed. It goes everywhere throughout the house. And... At this point, it is so congested and so revealed going back and forth and like in every inch of this like first floor that you just don't know where it's going. It's too intense. See if there is any exits. Although with a bar like that, I don't see him going out that door. Mason would like to do it like the kind of thing you can put, you can put up behind you. 
Does the bar look like the kind of thing, like the kind of lock that can be done no. as you leave? Inside. Uh, I suppose he could have left through another door, but it seems inconvenient if he was leaving for a casual reason. Oh yeah, Mason would like to do a uh, investigation check to see the room of how come his scent's all over the place, but he's not here right now. Kind of. I mean, it's where he lives. I mean, I get that, but more like the case of, you know, if all directions points here, where is he? Okay, go ahead. Dirty 20. Nice. So as you investigate and you go through, um, in the store, like, cupboard, where he keeps most of his dry food and stuff, there is a hatch in the floor that leads below. Uh, Mason's gonna motion to Fenrir. Motion to the hatch. He's gonna draw his rapier as he's gonna just slowly open it. As you open it, there is... Good job. Like, um, you know those, um, it's not like stairs, but they're not, it's not like a ladder as well. It's kind of like a hybrid of the two, you know what I mean? Like, they're like really, really yeah. steep stairs that's pretty much like a ladder. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like one of those going downwards into a cellar. Thank you, Mason. That's worth a, that's worth a shot, but since we have not checked it out yet, I, I wish to be prepared. You told me to give you a warning? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you could lead on this one, since I don't see too well in the dark, and I don't want to, you know, cast a light, lose our uh, sense of surprise. I don't think Fenrir sees well in the dark either, do you? Oh, I'm just saying. You do? Well, I'm just saying because of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a, this, this is a busted race, remember? I, I couldn't remember if you had dark vision or not. Yeah, I did. And it's Mason's so, like, but, you know this, uh, you know this life better than me, friends. You take the lead. Fenrir's gonna bend forward and his face is going to change structure, grow, growing teeth and claws. As you so approach kind of the cellar door, Fenrir, you smell blood. You smell Marcus's blood. As you go down into this dimly lit basement, there is a little light in there. So Mason, you are able to see. As you go through, you see a headless body chained to the wall. Lashes. It is shirtless with but um like trousers on it has cuts and lacerations all across the body and the arms and it is completely headless and Fenrir it is the scent of Marcus Fenrir seems stuffed and Kind of, kind of defeated, and he just says, What? Uh, as Mason gets a bit closer, he just kind of just is more talking out loud than really to Fenrir. Roll me investigation. That's a 12. Even with a 12, you can tell that this body and... This body is freshly dead. However, through it is very apparent, even with that 12, that the, um, what is it, the bruises around the wrists from being chained up, and the oldest of the scars have been there since before either you 
or Fenrir or Nox has even made it to this city. So he was like, I'm scarred. He's been scarred the whole time. Are you implying he's been tortured down here? He's the been whole time? here the whole time. As, as Mason just kind of realizes, holy shit. Maybe, uh, it maybe we weren't talking to Marcus at all. Uh, Finrir wipes away a couple tears. Very manly tears, obviously. The warrior. Um, he's gonna be like... But then... A duplicated scent? Think of it, Fenrir. If somebody's able to mask their scent, there's a possibility there's another ritual that can duplicate a scent. So they could be anyone, and we have no way to track it. So they, we know they've no. been here recently. Yeah. Um. If as you are investigating Mason, um, and going around, there is a table on the left side of the cellar that has uh, instruments on it a couple of arcane equipment, um, and a book. As uh, he's definitely going to go over there and inspect The book further. is opened to a page on how to, how to eliminate your scent to throw off werewolves, and how to duplicate your scent as a fellow werewolf to trick them into aiding you. As you close the book, this book is, um, now you don't know if the book was stolen or not, but the book is one of the, um, I would say more like a Bible to the Silver Dagger. Fenrir, you've been played. While, while he looked at that, Fenrir was doing some very quick funeral rites on the werewolf. Mm -hmm. And he'll look over and be like, Agreed. We need to get that contract back. I think they would be so foolish as to leave it here. They're pretty fucking ballsy, if you ask me. But I don't think they'd be that stupid. I can take a quick look, but... Those contracts... Whoever... That was... He's, he's like point, pointing upstairs. That fake Marcus... He probably has it on his person. I also worry... For... As awful as this is, it really could just be the Silver Dagger. I I have little reason to connect it with our supernatural servant, unless that that is a coincidence, and they are still connected as well. Well, either way, we're in a lot more trouble than we thought. If Marcus, to is able to, if Marcus is able to disguise himself so thoroughly that he can just walk in and out of the station and nobody notices, and the scent is so good that not even you could tell, because the magic could possibly use the whole guard against us. Really gotta keep into the shadows with this one. What I worry about is that he just decides... Well, actually, what I worry about is whatever magic he placed on us through through his deception. And then even beyond that, let's say we win. How will we ever find him again? 
We're looking for a for a hay in a haystack. I know, I know. We don't even know who the fuck this guy is. And at least we know one person he's not. And we'll look yeah. over at Marcus. Yeah. Let's see if we can find anything here. I doubt the papers will look at this, but perhaps something useful. Go ahead and roll me uh, investigation, the two of you. Uh, can I give him bardic inspiration before I do that? Not for me, but for uh, Fenrir? Yeah. Right. Is that a d6? Uh, I believe so. Let me double check, since level 8, it's kind of... I think oh, so. No, no, it's a d8. My oh, was d8. Yeah, d8. I'll also use my tactical assessment, so I'm going to be adding 2d8 to this. Jesus. All right. At I mean, my investigation's for... not good, but I get some nice bonuses. But I use up resources. Yeah. Okay, that's a three at first. Darn, got a nine. Nine. Uh, well, I will also say, uh, I mean, even though I did that one with that one, my passive <laughs> investigation is technically 18. Mm -hmm. Um, so, as you are going through and investigating a little bit further, um, you don't really see anything else. Um, Fenrir, you do find something as you're going through, kind of like the pockets of the body, seeing, like, what, what kind of things did he have in her pockets? Was anything left behind around the body? Um, in was his it, back. Was it like silver chains and such? Uh, yes, the chains were silver, so you can't really touch those. But in the in his back cool. is a silver dagger. As you look further, and the silver dagger is right in the back where the heart would be. I'll just kind of sigh. So, like, position him so that it's clearly visible. So I presume uh, Mason sees it, but he's not going to grab it or anything. Mm -hmm. As well as, as you're looking at it, the, the interesting bit is that what chopped off the head was not made out of silver. If it was, there would be, like, scarring. There is no mm -hmm. scarring. Which makes you believe that the head was cut off after death. Hmm. They were talking about, like, skinning or whatever. Does it look like that process happened or could have happened? Nope. You don't see that. Okay. Do I see that it didn't happen? Uh, yes. Okay. Like, there are no signs that it would have taken place. Yeah. Just confirming a positive, uh, a confirmed negative, not an unsure. Mm-hmm. The, oh, all right, doesn't seem like they have anything here. I do, perhaps they would come back. And that would give us an, uh, an opportunity to confront them. But when would we next next promise to meet them? Well, he didn't really say. He just said he was going to file the paperwork. But we, had, we had presumed that we were going to attack the vampire house again th this night. Possibly, but I don't remember hearing like a specific meetup point. Besides, if he comes back... Uh, to his place busted up. Uh, our cover is going to be blown. If he came back, uh, I worry because I would like to fight him now. See him. Uh, uh, the, the only thing I know about our mystery servant is that when we kill him, we'll know. That is what we were told to me. But, yes. so... Uh, if he's going to get in the way, 
a DM, can I do like a an insight check to see if he seemed sketchy from last night? Like he thinks he, he his cover was blown. Roll me a history check. That is a nine. Not at all. Cool as a cucumber. I remember he was like weirded out that like you were like looking at anything. Yeah, it's more like that. That's what it's kind of like to him. It's like that's it, pretty good asking. Know, if they like, knew. Yeah. So Mason's like very on the fence. Like if uh, this. Marcus does or doesn't know. Uh, so there, it's it's very hard to tell whether he's going to either come back or he's going to plan a trap for us. I worry that the trap is laid. If this spell is truly so powerful, then perhaps he simply need, hit, needed us at a particular time. Possibly. Gods. I do wonder why not we, you saw in that book that it could be immediate. If this is the silver dagger story, why not have it be immediate? Uh, because when it comes to people like the silver dagger, they don't want to always strike quick from what I can tell. They want to draw things out. Make sure you have your guard down so they can get the biggest fish that they could possibly get. Um, you truly think that he did that? They lengthened it out over arrogance, or was there? I, I would suspect a particular reason for waiting until a later time. Well, from what uh, from what you guys told me yesterday. The Silver Dagger are now branching out to do vampires. If if this Marcus came here to do werewolf investigation, and then he stumbled upon a vampire nest that big, and now he has two people that I think are allies, and one of them being, is he just kind of motions, well, you know. I think he was just more biding his time so he can catch all of us all at once. So you think he was going to allow us to attack the vampire tonight, and only enact his plan after? Yeah, ambush all of us all at once. Get the vampires, get whatever werewolves are remaining in this town, bada bing bada boom. Our only, my only plan was to attack the main vampire. Even he said we couldn't fight such a large coven. But, Possibly, but we didn't even know do you that think, he was do you, do you think he would want us to... He would, he would attack us all at the same time? Because I would... I would, If I were him, I would have us fight each other first. Oh yeah, of course, weaken us so he could take the jump on us. As you even said, we probably couldn't take him on, even together. So, weaken the main vampire and whatever minions he's got... And we don't even know if there's any more silver daggers here in the town. If we didn't, if we couldn't tell that Marcus was one, how many more agents could be here? So, get us to fight whatever vampires are left, and then spring the trap when we're all weak, eliminating all, uh, all in this town. I worry that he has these papers on his person at all times. He has to. So and we don't have three weeks to wait. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen tonight. If we... They'll have that advantage on us. Presuming that this uh, trigger is so easy to activate. He'll have that advantage on us no matter when we attack him. Yes. And Although I, I do I wonder if I... 
I can't trust them. I thought about using his strength to still, to still take down our true enemy, or what maybe may still end up proving our true enemy, but I have had too many uh, poor experiences with this group to even even think an alliance of convenience beneficial. Yeah. Um. A DM. Uh. So, could Ma would Mason know if he could write a letter or contact uh, his patron, Lady Aradeth, quick enough for her to get like a message or contact him back before nightfall? Uh, you could definitely send a message. Uh, you don't know if it would reach them by nightfall, and you don't know if they'd be able to respond by nightfall. Mm. But you would definitely be able to send a message. You just don't know how quickly the response will be, or if they'd be able to mobilize quick enough. Yes. Did we, um, did we plan on meeting Marcus somewhere to attack the vampires again tonight? Nope. Nope. Like, we, because that was the next plan. Like, that was like, oh, we're going to go back here and do the exact same thing that we originally mm -hmm. planned. Like, at least Benrear would have brought that up. But it wasn't going to be tonight. If you remember, tonight is election. And so he was not yeah. going to be able to get away from the guard, which is what he said. He wasn't going to be able to get away from the guard, so it wasn't going to be tonight possibly tomorrow, though, after the election. Does something play to see if the scent of Marcus left the building at all? But I'm doubting it. Uh, no, it did not. Well, only other option I could think of is I could write to my patron again and see if she could somehow uh, either give us uh, some advice or give us a way to remove this uh, curse contract on us. So, I'm not sure if that could work. So you could send her a message, work. but I'm still working through the, the ideas. Yeah. So, we have every reason to think that this fake Marcus is the one killing all of the humans in this town. Uh, I would say possibly. Uh, high, he's using the same. Chance. He's using the same rare magic. Yes. But and he's pointing it more towards vampires than werewolves. He's not. We've we've killed we've we've killed one person with a with a suspicious name and two randos. No, the person with this suspicious name is still alive. Okay, uh, who are the who are the victims? So, the person who died, who was the witness, was a liar, Dana. Uh, the death victims were. Give me one second. Gotta go back through my notes. There, um, mm -hmm. I'll continue great. with my point. Um, if we also think that he's the Silver Dagger, which also seems very likely, if not obvious, why would he be killing humans? They're not. They're cruel, but they're not particularly known for such. Uh, best I think I could think is put blame or uh, cause paranoia. I don't even I don't know them to be that reckless. As I remember, the first victim was pretty obviously. They were both hopeless people. In the so slums. like. 
could be to affect this election too. But we we're thinking now that he is a Silver Dagger member from probably probably not not from here. Maybe he said before I, that he yeah, was I, from I am, a neighboring. Going, uh, yeah, he did say that, and like we also just know that like Silver Dagger tends to do things bigger than one city, and like pretty much everything I'm saying is not necessarily correct. But no. I am pointing out that all that all of the automatic things we 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 would assume don't fit together. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I'm saying some things that are obviously wrong, and I realize it. But and I, like none of my things are guaranteed. But like, you just yeah. going through your thought process. So I so I could see perhaps they're not human, or perhaps they actually do care about this election. Or perhaps they're not the Silver Dagger. But all of those possibilities seem strange. The book could have been stolen. As a means to an end to, you know, disguise the scent and whatnot. You know, it's also like it's such a weird. difficult like, yeah, if they, if they were doing this to simply go undercover, let's say they have supernatural senses and can tell Ma- Marcus is a we- and can tell Marcus is a werewolf. Why pick the most well, the the most able to defend himself, most suspicious member? in the guard because even if he did a good job there are, there are details that will be that will end up being suspicious possibly so you can get a good uh, cover to have good connections but that's pretty flimsy I sh- if he's anything like me connections are the hardest thing to get that can be it takes a long time to build connections but I wonder. I I, I would find it. That, when we went to that that house, that mansion. They had a bunch of werewolf head trophies too. So that's the thing that's just kind of bugging me. If the real Marcus here is similar to them, where's this head? Like, where's he keeping this trophy? Not here. So he I suppose I just ch- chalk that up to. Silver Dagger shenanigans that can be coolly eccentric. And possibly. But if this guy must have either another base or he's possibly walking around some more. I would wonder if this is just... What were you going to say, Fenrir? I, I I am wondering if this is just one person that they can find. I don't I do not know why they would go so far out of their way to disguise themselves as a werewolf, especially in a world where Silver Dagger outnumber us so much. Is that true, Yeah. Um Yes and no. In certain areas, yes. In other areas, no. Um like in the in the um in the theocracy of the saviors, you're basically a dead man if you're discovered. Like, there will be, it'll be like 50 to 1. If you're in, like, the tier empire, you can get away with it because there are more, the people there are more tolerant towards werewolves in general, so they're more willing to help you than give you up. Um, in other areas, like the university, it's kind of flip-flop, depending on who caught you. Um, in the Kingdom of Ulv, it's also a little, little up in the air. I'm sorry, repeat that again? I'm talking about pure numbers, too. Uh, number of werewolves versus number of silver dagger. Um... 
there are definitely more werewolves than Silver Dagger members. Because oh, okay. there are no Silver Dagger members. <laughs> they have no base in the Uncharted Land. And in the Uncharted Land, werewolves are kind of able to exist without any sort of prejudice or, like, anyone trying to, like, kill them off. So there's a pretty large population within the Uncharted Land itself. I, I do not know why he would choose such a volatile individual to walk around as, at least if hiding was their goal. But it sure did pay off if they randomly chose to do so during these uh, pieces. Although perhaps it, w it really was a coincidence and he just chose one of the higher ranking. Possibly. Either if way, that's the case, uh, then no, perhaps they chose location. multiple of the higher ranking. Could be. There could be more agents in this town. But I don't think I would actually put. Hmm. But... I would be so bold as to suggest perhaps uh, many different major figures in this town are secretly all one person. You think in uh, one of... You think one of the, uh, the mayor electorals could be one? I remember if, if he was trying to fool us, he seemed to be pretty adamant that putting the... the head of the guard would be in our own best interest. With that thought, um, I think that's a good place to end it. Nice short session, because for progression I need Knox, and Knox will be here next week. So I think that's a good place to kind of stop it with that large when are we doing think more? tank. <laughs> oh yeah. Of uh, possibilities. Everything we had, everything's flipped. Yeah, everything's kind of on their head at the moment for you guys. When so, are we doing the uh, Wolf episode? We are doing a Yule episode. Um, that will be not next week. That is going to be, I posted it on here. Um, that will be December 22nd. So, for we've done one before, but for people who don't know, and um, Mason, you don't know, um, the episodes in and of themselves are non canonical. So, it'll take you out of whatever it is, and it's kind of like one, it's kind of like a one shot with just the characters, and it's kind of just out of the campaign for a moment for more Christmas stuff. Christmas-like stuff and things like that. And then the next week, we'll go straight back into it. So yeah, but I think that's a good place to end it for tonight. A lot of things what? happening. <laughs> A lot of interesting things. And we will see you oh, all next time. Goodbye. See you. Later.